amongst many fun articles in there, there's one of them titled <laughs> BFF Forever. Uh, and so BFFs, for those of us who aren't uh, <laughs> uh, high school aged girls, uh, stands for best, best Friends Forever, BFFs. Mm -hmm. And um, you use that to uh, summarize the three big schools of statistical inference. So frequentist is one that we just talked about. Another one is Bayesian. Mm -hmm. And the third one is actually one that I am not very familiar with, uh, fiducial. Right. So for our listeners' sake, could we go over what these three different schools are, frequentist, Bayesian, and fiducial? And in the last case there, you're going to be explaining it to me for the first time too. Yeah, well, I don't blame you. Fiducio is one of these uh, perspectives that has existed for a long time and essentially coming from Ari Fisher. Uh, you know, Fisher uh, contributed a lot to uh, statistics, as you know. Yeah, and, uh, but it's also, it also has always been regarded as the Fisher's biggest blunder because it's the oh. most controversial one. So uh, let me give a try. Okay, this is, uh, this is self worth. We'll probably, we can do an episode for two hours to explain all these three, three different perspectives and why we have this uh, kind of a community called you know, BFF. Um, <clears throat> first, I think the frequentest one probably is the one that most of us learn statistics, that's where you start from, right? And I, I, I'm sure because the most uh, textbooks you know, teach that. And I certainly think I went through the whole process myself uh, without even knowing there are these different names, right? So, uh, so I think the best way I can explain this, let me really give a try, that um, start from thinking about data, all right? So data <clears throat> essentially has, has, data have two uh, pieces in any data. Well, one part is what we call a signal. That's the pattern. That's the something we want to, to, to understand, to, to know. The other part is noise. These are part, you know, they're, they're there, it's annoying, we want to get rid of them. But you know, data basically comes with both the signal and the noise. And so for the entire data science community, in fact, all we do is trying to separate what is signal, what is noise. The complication there is first, how do you do that? Second is you know, signal in one study is noise in another study and vice versa. The, the, the notion itself is, is, is a relative one. So you can see why the philosophy is there all the time, okay? Because you know, these issues, for example, particular one, I also have done quite a bit of study is on these uh, you know, individualized medicine, right? There is, you know, what's a signal, what's a noise, you know, what's evidence, it's, it's just very complicated. But let me go back to explain these, these different, uh, three different schools. The frequentists essentially focus on data itself. They, they, you know, every study, whatever study you do, right? You need to think about what is a replication. Because, you know, if you have any problem, uh, in order for you to, to convince anybody, particularly scientifically, you need to talk about, like, if I do this study again, like, you know, you know the, the, my method will work, not just for this one case. It's not even clear what do you mean by, say, working with this one case. You have to think about replications, what the replications are. And it is in thinking these different replications, these different philosophers comes in. The frequent thinking is focusing on data. Basically thinking about hypothetical thinking about that if I can repeat the process again and again, seeing different data, how my procedure is going to work. For example, in the predictions, right? We're basically thinking about, well, the whole randomization say, you only have one sample. Let's say we talk about 400 people. But the idea here is that if I do this repli rep replicate the 400 people again and again, many times, how my procedure is going to work, right? So that's called a frequentist. So you see it, it basically requires you to think about the data that you actually don't have. That's the frequentist. The base said, well, I don't care the data I don't have. I care about the data I have. Can mm -hmm. you tell me, like, based on the data I have, what's going on? Like, you know, how do I make an inference problem? Because all I have is my data. Now, the problem here is that if you think like a frequentist there, you will get stuck because there's, there's no replication there, right? Data is fixed. And whatever the scenario I want to know is a fixed scenario. The hypothetical is it's unknown, right? So the base will think about, say, okay, now let's hypothetically think about all the different scenarios that could have generated the data I have seen. Among all these scenarios, which one is most likely? Right. Right? So, you know, it's essentially, it's, for example, if you have some COVID symptoms, now I have to think about, like, oh, you know, there are many possible ways why you're coughing, 
like what I'm having now, right? There are many possible ways you will call things, right? And which one is, is most likely? Now, I think for most people, that is a question people want to really have the answer. I don't care about you know, other people's symptoms. But in order to answer that question, you need to come up with a replication. Think about all these different scenarios. So that's what the Bayesian called the pry, the pry knowledge. You need to think about, and that itself is a controversial notion. You need to think about probabilistically what are all these different scenarios you, 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 you could have. And right. the frequencies can reject the notion and say, no, no, I only have one disease. Okay. Right. I don't want to assume that I have a multiple disease. So, but you, you see the direction is different. The replication is now imagine all these different scenarios could have generated the exact data as, as, as I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the one is, so I always have these fan shapes. One is thinking about a one scenario generate all the different data. The other is a reverse the shape. Think about your data, but all different scenario can generate the data as you, as you see. The fiducial is the hardest one because fiducial does not fix either one of them. Fiducial is essentially thinking about the pair. Think about all the data, all these uh, uh, scenarios you can have. Imagine, you know, every person in the population, you, you have your, your symptoms, you could have your diseases, okay? And, and you have all these uh, different pairs. So fiducial, instead of uh, working on the, the frequency working on the data, the base working on the the, the signal, they put a distribution on the signal. And the frequency is working with the noise part. Frequency look at the difference between the signal and the, and, and the data, thinking about what are the possible noises are consistent with the symptoms I'm having. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it operates on this kind of a joint space. And it has, it, it itself has philosophically and even operationally, you know, have quite a bit of, quite a bit of uh, trouble. That's why you probably have not heard about. People don't really uh, uh, teach that much about. But it offers a way. What the frequency is trying to achieve? Sorry, what the fiducia is trying to achieve? Is they trying to achieve? They trying to answer the base question, which is giving my data. What is the disease I have? But they don't want to assume that kind of a prior knowledge. Which you may or may not have. I see, so yeah. that's why I make the very harder. They try to operate, they try to use a distribution on the noise to infer that distribution on your this disease without assuming the, the prior pri distribution. And it and the end up that's not really possible, but there are certain scenarios under which that you can get pretty far. And that's why the school itself is, is a much more philosophical and much harder to operate, much harder to teach. Much harder for me to for me to explain, and I'm sure all my fiduciary friends will say, "Shadow, you didn't give the right interpretation of the explanation." <laughs> but I I try. Okay, I would invite well, anyone trying to explaining fiduciary without formulas. There's no way for me to know if it was the right explanation, but it did make sense to me. So Good. I like that. It's so Good. fiduciary statistics. Um, it makes use of the data that you have. It doesn't worry about some unknown distribution that you don't have, um, and it's trying to make inferences without priors, priors that exactly. Bayesian statistics relies on. Right, right. And it's trying to give a distribution answer without assuming a prior. And it, it turned out that you, you can do it in some sense because you do have this distribution on the noise. So the way they do it essentially is saying, you know, just imagine very simply, your data is noise plus signal. But if you have data, once you see the data, if I have a distribution on the noise, it is somehow implies that there's, there's distribution on a signal, right? Because the data equal to the signal plus noise, I can kind of solve that equation. But it, it, except that solving these distributions is not exactly right. So that's that's why the complication, you know, you know, come uh, you know comes in. But there is an attempt uh, uh, trying to do the best in, in terms of the best of the both schools, and that's why gotcha. the thing is still alive. In, and in fact, uh, what's interesting that there are increasingly more people. In the machine learning content, they're doing things that they don't realize. They're actually doing fiducial. Uh, they're solving. They're plugging this thing, solving equations, assuming this is known that known. If you look at them, they're not coherent. They they don't follow property school rules. They follow some solving equation rules. That actually is what the fiducial does. Except that most mm -hmm. people don't know what they're doing is actually a fiducial answer.